History of Archaeology, Part 1, Science. In order to understand the very beginnings of archaeology, we really have to understand two things. The history of science and the history of adventurers, these early people who did explorations that will later be covered by archaeology. So science, what is this science thing that we use in archaeology? Now, is archaeology a science? No. At least that's what I say. You might ask somebody else, oh, is archaeology science? Oh, yes, yes, it's a science. Look, not really. Do you get a science credit for archaeology? No. Archaeology is a humanity, right? It is the study of people. Are people scientific automatons? Not really. But we do use a framework of science that we put over archaeology in order to get real data. And that, that matters. That's, that's real. So we want to understand what is science. So what is science? I know. Is it Bunsen burners? Lab coats? Really? I like to say that science is a way to reliably predict natural phenomena. That's it. It's that simple. A way to reliably predict natural phenomena. A way to reliably know with some sort of data and knowledge how the natural world is going to work. So a way to reliably predict natural phenomena. And now in order to do this science thing in the, in the real world, you are going to use, I like to think of it as like an angle or, um, or as, a, as a focus of empiricism. Empiricism is, you could say, data-minded. Somebody who's empirical is just there for the facts, right? They don't, they don't care how you feel, okay? Science is all about data. It ain't about feelings. Oh, oh, do you feel bad? Science does not care. So we are empirical. And honestly, what is empiricism? Empiricism is really what we can sense in our world using our five senses. So what are those five senses? Let's think, right? You know these. Remember that time in the third grade, the five senses, right? What we can smell, what we can t touch, what we can taste, what we can see, right? And, and so on and so forth. So we use these senses to kind of record our world. And it is through those sentence, senses that we uh, collect data. And that's how science works. Now, yes, there's the scientific method, these steps that science goes through, the idea of having a hypothesis, an idea, a hypothesis, that's really what it is, just an idea on the natural world, and then testing it. And then when you do that test, if it works, you do it again and make sure it works. If it doesn't, you go back to your original idea. Yes, there's a couple more steps, but really that's the core of science. You have an idea about the natural world and you test it to see if you're right or wrong. What I'm describing to you is really the, the deductive method in, in science. There's kind of, there's two styles, two ways to practice science. We have the inductive method and the deductive method. Deductive is classic hypothesis testing. You have an idea about the, the world, how it works. You test, you see if you're right or wrong. You can also do the inductive method. That's, I like to think of it as almost the opposite of, of the deductive method. For the inductive method, it's really looking for patterns. That's what you're doing in the world. You're kind of uh, looking at something over, over a term of, of days or months or years, and you're looking for patterns in that. Oh, how does this work? Oh, do you see things that are happening again and again over time? You're recording these down. It's this pattern search. And then once you find patterns, then you explain. So that's, that's inductive. Now, quick quiz. Deductive or inductive, which is more used in archaeology? Inductive. Now, that isn't to say that deductive isn't, is like the lesser one. Or something they're both equally good it just depends on how you do your research you could do a really terrible inductive method based research just depends but I find that for archaeology the idea of hypothesis testing you don't really know what you're gonna find until you find it in archaeology you it's hard to hypothesize about something when you haven't dug it up yet 
you know? So I find that this idea of pattern searching is more attuned to the archeological world, but your mileage may vary. You can use either to, to do archeology. span both, both are equally fine. Now, um, in science, we have a couple basic ideas that we gotta kind of go with, uh, like a law. A law in science is a universal constant. Like this one. I know. Law of gravity. Universal constant. Every time I do this, every time I try to escape the planet Earth, it does not work. Right? I'm waiting for the day when I do this and then I just float and I've escaped the planet Earth. But that day ain't coming because gravity is a law. Now, when I talk about gravity, none of you get pissed. Nobody cares. Nobody out there is holding picket signs going, no gravity in class, right? And you know where I'm going with this. Now, everyone gets universal constants and they move on with their day. It ain't the same with theories, is it? A theory in science, well, before I tell you what it is, I gotta say that, that theory has a PR problem. And that problem is, what does theory mean to regular people in, in the everyday public versus what does theory mean to science, like a scientific theory. When you use the word theory in everyday speech, it just means a guess. Oh, I theorize that the burglar came in at three in the morning and he left at approximately four. That's just a guess, that's true, right? But you're guessing. A scientific theory is a different animal. The scientific theory is something that's been tried a lot of times and tried again and it works the same every time and it's the very best way that we can describe the earth around us. A, a scientific theory is an explanation. You see the difference? A guess, maybe, maybe not. An explanation, yes. See? So, in archaeology, we have to appreciate that. What a theory is. Theories are strong. Theories, uh, Theories explain our world. Now, the three most common theories that we're all gonna that we're all gonna deal with, I would say, you can almost say them with me: Big Bang theory, theory of relativity, and theory of evolution. All of them are fantastic ways of explaining our world. All of them have all kind of proofs and have been worked, uh, uh, shown to work again and again and again and one more time. But of those three, evolution is the most solid one. Evolution has been around for over 150 years. It explains biology. It is the cornerstone of biological sciences. So if you say, well, you know, evolution, it's just a theory. You're ignorant. Because what you don't understand is the, is the difference between the word. What you're using, you're using a sort of public way of, of the term theory, of using the term theory, in order to explain a scientific uh, piece of the natural world puzzle. So don't think that evolution is somehow weak because it's only a theory. It's an explanation of how the world works. So in archeology, span we're gonna deal with these, th these things as a background, right? It's this template we put over uh, the history of the past to understand it, this science template. There's, there's other science ideas that, that we'll see kind of come in uh, to, to archeology. span And these, these last two that I'm gonna talk about, they're a little more, it's a little more philosophy of science than it is, than it is hardcore science. Laws and theories, Hardcore put to bed science, but the next two I'd like to talk about are paradigm and Occam's razor and also I'll talk about paradigm shift a paradigm. It's not a law Right a law is a universal constant like gravity a Paradigm is just the accepted knowledge. We all believe it Earth is round. That's a paradigm. I Know a couple people out there with the earth is flat thing they're idiots. World is round. But 500 years ago, world was flat. They weren't idiots 500 years ago. They didn't know any better. They, they thought like, I'm walking along on this thing, pretty flat. It seems that they, there ain't no curvature here at all. Yeah, Earth is flat, okay. But then with some simple science measurements, you can tell that the Earth is round. Paradigm shift. Everyone, basically humans on the world go, yeah, that Earth is round thing seems to make a lot of sense. Paradigm, paradigm shift, okay? 
So we want to see, there will be common ideas in archaeology that might change over time. Like, uh, here's a paradigm, paradigm shift in archaeology. The Maya were just peaceful astronomy priests looking into the heavens for answers to their questions that their gods gave them. That was the old paradigm on the ancient Maya from maybe the 1950s. This idea that they didn't have any war and they were a peaceful sky-gazing people. Wrong! That's the joy of archaeology. New data comes in, we find new things, we find these images of really gory, bloody warfare amongst the Maya. The Maya weren't peaceful, loving astronomy priests staring at the heavens. They had just as many wars and bad days and good days as we do, right? They're just, they're, they're, not, they're not peaceful and, 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 and stargazing. They're normal people like you and me. Paradigm, paradigm shift. Finally, Occam's rule or Occam's razor. The idea that everything else being equal, simplest explanation is the best, right? That's Occam's rule. And I find that you should live by Occam's rule because it really helps you. It helps you in archeology span too because you can get lost in the data in archaeology. You can look at all these data points, all this stuff, all these artifacts that you've uncovered, right? And just like get into the description of them and try and figure out the past. And you're just, you're trying too hard, man. Simplest explanation is the best when in doubt. So what I like to think of it as, it's like the flow chart with the least amount of steps tends to be the best.